So <clears throat> I had to get this. This is the beginning of the end. The vegetable garden. So what I got to start doing is filling those three buckets with this sandy soil. Look how much of the black soil I went through just filling that in right there. I mean, that's crazy. And so good to have a golf cart because I'll just load these buckets on the golf cart and then we put it in the back of the car. And uh, and I'm on my way, you know, let's, uh, well, let's, get, let's get another video here real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I had to get back to the garden project. Just wanted to get a quick video. So we've uh, we brought it out here, and I'm bringing it around. But what's amazing to me now, I, you know, I did go down. I mean, you can look at it. I went down. He said go down six inches. I think that's about six inches. It might be a little more. But look at this. That's a whole yard of dirt. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a three to one ratio. I throw in, you know, one shovel full of sand for every three of the of the good dirt. And uh, I've already gone through half of it. And uh, boy, I tell you, <laughs> this is gonna take a while. I, I took a whole load of that sand over to the uh, dirt place today. And uh, I mean, I filled up a whole big bin and uh, a trash can and three buckets. <clears throat> and you can see how far I got. I just got over to right here. <laughs> so so that's going to be a, a whole lot of trips to the dirt place to, to, to get rid of enough of that so that I can finish it up. I, I have a feeling I'm actually going to probably be buying some bags of dirt. Now, what we should have is uh, this should be one hell of a vegetable garden. You know, when, when I'm throwing that much dirt in, uh, you know, I, you know, I didn't really think about it. But uh, this is actually a pretty big area. So, man, I should have a ton of fresh vegetables when it's all said and done. And, uh, of course, I'm going to go ahead and plant right here. Uh, well, I guess I'll do it tomorrow. I mean, because I can't, you know, I can only take the dirt away during the week when the place is open. You know, I can't just drive up in here. Uh, although they might be open Saturday. But, uh, so this is kind of where we are. All right. So, one more quick uh, resilience vegetable garden video uh you know it's, it's blowing my mind you know like i said i started this back in october and uh getting that rock out was just a gosh dang nightmare i mean this is proceeding pretty rapidly but i mean you see all of this though it's surprising how much sandy dirt that is i mean i i have to bring the cart back here and i load up buckets and i bring them around i dump it all in the back of my car and i in another bigger bucket uh, that I have to shovel out and take it down the road to, to get rid of it. But, I mean, look at how much of that dirt I've gone through. I don't think I'm going to have enough. I mean, I, I thought a whole yard of black dirt would be more than enough. And maybe I'm going down too deep. He said, well, Jonathan said six inches. I mean, that looks to me like about six inches. And uh, But, uh, I mean, it's slow going. You know, you got to frame it in, level it. You know, and I what I do is I do three shovels of black dirt to one shovel of the sandy soil and just kind of mix it together. And then I'm going to put some miracle grow in here. But, uh, you know, this is this is what you got to do, people. The crisis is coming. You need to grow your own damn food. That's all I got to say. And uh, who knows? And that maybe that'll be it. Well, hopefully it'll be enough to get me over to about right there, I bet. And then I'll have to buy bags of dirt just to finish it off, you know, but I'm not quitting. Every day, every day I do something with this, and uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm going to have some doggone food growing in here. All right, talk to you all later. So I never know from one day to the next what video I'm going to make or what my day is going to look like. Uh, you know, weather has a lot to do with everything, but uh, this is it. Okay, my wife doesn't know this. She's out of town. <laughs> But, uh, you know, getting back to resilience, uh, that water heater looks fine, but it's 20, it's 21 years old. You know, this thing's from 1999. And uh, so, you know, I, you know, if, if I didn't feel like we were heading for economic calamity, 
would I replace that hot water heater? No. No, I'd just wait till it fails and uh, leave it in there. But do I think we're facing economic calamity? Do I think the dollar is going to be uh, toilet paper here soon? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And then, and then how are you going to get somebody to come in and do the work and, and, and get a new hot water heater? You know, what are you going to do? You're going to drive down there and give them a silver coin and say, hey, here's a silver coin. You know, please bring me a hot water heater and put it in. No, so I'm being proactive. Plus, this is going to save me uh, $6 a month that I'm paying right now on insurance with uh, Duke Energy. And, you know, <clears throat> and I've, I've, you know, you got to do your research, uh, how they honor that warranty. Um, basically, I was told that they'll come out and try to repair the stupid thing. They might just put a new heating element in the bottom, which might get me another, you know, two or three years uh, before it fails again. And then probably once they honor that warranty, uh, they'll probably cancel it. They'll say, "Well, no, we're not going to we're not going to warranty it anymore because we we honored our warranty and uh, you know we spent uh, you know two hundred dollars and, and fixed it for you and uh, you know good riddance and and then you still got to buy a new hot water heater." So <clears throat> I'm getting that's just it's resilience, people. You know, I'm thinking about everything around my house in my life that I got to do to get prepared for what I think is going to be the the biggest economic calamity in the history of the world. And so let's just swing around. Look at there. Oh, Kirk, more toilet paper. <laughs> now that's going to go up into the attic right here because I got the, the wood up there. And what, what happened when a neighbor gave me more wood? I got more wood that I'm going to put up in the attic for storage. And, uh, and so today, you know, I am going for a bike ride. <clears throat> I'm going to go do some hiking. You got to have a balance to life. But uh, let's just swing over here. I'll show you. You know, you got to make progress on everything every day now the hot water heater goes in tomorrow but you can see here i'm going to be i'm going to run this up and drop this dirt off at the place and uh that'll be good and uh let's let's get around to the back and then let's uh let's get a film because the first seeds are going into the ground and we'll have that discussion in just one second so what we'll be doing is we'll be filling <clears throat> these two containers and then of course the buckets too and, uh, and then I'm going to be taking those down to the dirt place to dump them. But I want to show you something else, you know. They talk about the Green New Deal. You know, I, I'm totally for recycling. <clears throat> this is a can crusher that I bought. And it's kind of nice in the fact that it just comes over, crushes the can, and you put it down in there. Now, I could put them in the recycle bin, but I don't trust them, guys. I take it to the aluminum place, and they give me... Yeah, two or three bucks but and there's a there's a whole bag of cans right there that I'm going to be getting rid of today so I mean I'm combining <clears throat> combining everything together I'll swing by the dirt place on my way and then I'll take the cans to the recycle place and then boom doing the Santos trail today to for a nice long at least six mile hike and I uh, probably make uh, and I've <clears throat> I thought about this and you know I never told you my cancer story and uh, who knows, it may come back a third time, and then that's the end of me. But, uh, you know, I do need, do want to do that, and it's not for sympathy or anything. I just want other cancer uh, victims to know what to do and, you know, the stuff that I went through and the things that you need to think about. So we're, we're going to make that video today, but I just wanted to show you, you know, what I do to, to do a little bit for the environment, you know, take them cans and I, uh, you know, put them in a bag and take them to the, the recycle place. And, yeah, I get a little bit of money. And, you know, what? Uh, a lot of people, Some there's another guy in the community, he does that and says he gives the money to charity. But uh, <clears throat> I paid a hundred and some dollars for that can crusher. And uh, so I, I just keep the money because I'm paying for the can crusher. Um, so, plus the gas. You got to pay for the gas now. Hey, was I right? Five dollars a gallon five dollars a gallon don't you just love biden oh that's the green new deal baby <laughs> so this is <clears throat> this is what i do i come around with the cart fill them buckets up and then i take those to the car and dump them into those other buckets and uh you can see i'm set up for i want you to witness me putting the first seeds in the ground and i've been watching youtube videos on uh you know what to plant, when to plant it. Uh, you know how to how to space it, and we're we're going to get into all of that. Now you can see, you know, 
how far I've gotten. Uh, do I have enough soil here? I don't think I do. You know, once I dig all this out uh, and put this over in here, uh, and you can see there was a sprinkler right here. Now, why in the world they capped it off? I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a sprinkler head in there and, and take that cap off and see if that sprinkler will work because that'll water in these vegetables right here for me. Um, if it if it works, because uh, we'll get into the the planting of the seeds here in just a minute. But I, I just want to show you, you know, how what I'm doing each and every day to get ready for the economic calamity that's coming. And uh, you know, just just last night, I I, I just took a took a ride let's just get the cart again you know I took a ride on the uh, motorcycle just around the neighborhood just because I wanted to cool off I've been working out here on the on the garden for for out I don't know a couple hours and uh, you know I just wanted to cool off before it got dark and uh, you know I have to oh here check out the bushes aren't they beautiful they're blooming right now this is March here in Florida you know I, I have to admit I mean the homeowner he did plant some really beautiful stuff but I mean, all this rock, you know, God, it's, it's, it's cost me so much time that, you know, there was a crepe maple, uh, crepe, crepe myrtle, excuse me, crepe myrtle tree that was right here. And it was monstrous. And uh, boy, I won't even get into that story. I mean, I, it, took, it took me uh, a good uh, four months to get that thing out with the stump and, and have it cut down. And of course, I almost killed myself. I tried to trim it myself and I fell off the ladder and uh, landed in that rock and uh, the tree fell on me where I had been <laughs> cutting it. You know, I, I should be dead about a thousand times for all the stupid stuff that I do. But you know, I was just trying to save some money and do it myself and uh, it was a rickety old ladder. And that's why, you know, once again, resilience. I bought new ladders now. And uh, so I can, you know, I can work on like I might scrub along there, you know, do a, do a little bit of work and, you know, I can get up on the new ladders and do do a lot of the work myself because, you know, I think it's going to be hard to get people to, to do work. But let's uh, let's get the seeds in the ground and we'll talk about that in just a second. So my first step before I put the seeds in the ground, I put down this miracle Grow uh, feeder refill and uh, the YouTube videos that I watched. And, you know, I'm not I'm not an authority on this stuff, people. This is my first garden since I was a kid. My dad used to make me till the backyard and we had a vegetable garden back there. And unfortunately back then the, the deer, <laughs> the deer would come in and eat all the vegetables. <laughs> and then we put chicken wire up around the plants and uh, they still would get through the chicken wire. And, uh, but I mean, we did have fresh vegetables and uh, you know, I kind of forgotten about that. And I was the one who had to do all the doggone work. He had made me till the doggone garden. But uh, so what we've done is we've put down some miracle Grow here and uh, it, it, the video say be careful not to over fertilize the soil. Um, so I just put down, you know, one bag of feed here and I'm going to rake this in and then we're going to get the first seeds in the ground. And uh, I'm not going to water them in today because I got to keep this soil nice and dry because it, you know, when it gets wet, it's a lot more difficult to, to, to get it out and and get rid of it so I'm trying to keep all this soil really really dry but I want to get the seeds into the ground just to show you uh, what I've learned on YouTube and like I said I'm just learning from YouTube videos uh, so now whether these people know what they're talking about or not I don't know I guess the proof will be in the pudding uh, in a few months to see if I have peppers because that's what we're planting first we're gonna plant peppers first so this is gonna be kind of my pepper area and a little bit about what I've learned on that or what I think I've learned uh, is you can't plant different types of peppers next to each other because they will cross pollinate and uh, that could ruin the flavor of the peppers. So what I'm planning on doing is this is going to be my pepper area because I love peppers. So I'm trying to plant the thing that I can just come right because in the summertime, man, mosquitoes are out. It's hotter than hell out here. And, you know, I don't want to be walking back here to get my peppers, you know, because that's my favorite thing. So we're going to I'm going to put the peppers right here closest to the door. So literally I have to just come out that door, pick a few peppers and go in and 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 uh, and have a have a field day, maybe cook them on the grill, whatever I want to do. All right, so let's uh, let's let's get to, to raking that in, and then we'll put the first seeds in the ground. All right, so uh, you know these swipe videos are all about resilience, and uh, oh man, uh, and I I just wanted to tell you the the latest moves that I'm making. All right, let me let me adjust that just a little bit. 
in the in investments because you know I never never ever intended on being a precious metals investor until last January when I saw the virus coming and I was trying to warn everybody and they all laughed at me and uh, nobody listens to anything I say but uh, so I started back then with this whole resilience thing and uh, I moved all our money out of stocks and bonds and uh, I didn't do it fast enough because we got hit in March you know pretty hard and uh, it's but I did I've definitely recovered everything that we lost and then some <laughs> so I just wanted to talk about the latest uh, moves I'm making you know I think the silver's still a good place to go uh, PSLV um, but uh, you know that trains left the building pretty much uh, you know the uh, with the silver squeeze on the prices have gone up quite a bit and uh, you know who knows maybe they'll beat it back down to 20 if it goes down to 24 dollars I'm gonna buy more uh, but at 26 27 28 I'm just holding steady because I own plenty. You know, if, if I didn't own a bunch, I'd, I'd pick up some right now because I think it's still a good investment even at these prices. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to back the train up on that. Gold's the same way. I wouldn't touch that. Uh, you know, I bought platinum. A lot of people ignored platinum, and uh, I'm glad they did. Uh, so I've got some of that, uh, you know, in my ETFs for platinum. It's Sprott. All at Sprott. Don't buy GLD or SLV, you know, not to touch those. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm a contrarian investor and uh, I'm trying to go where everybody else doesn't think of and, and I've missed out. I've missed out, man. Rhodium I saw today is at uh, $27,000 an ounce. Now, see, that's an unregulated, uncontrolled market. And, you know, if you didn't have the big boys beating down gold and silver with the futures market and uh, everything they're doing to short it, uh, I think that, that gold would be right up there with the um, rhodium. And so when they lose control of everything, the, the prices are going to go sky high on all of this stuff. But, you know, as a little fish, you just got to kind of go where, where nobody else is thinking of. And so uranium. Okay, uh, you know, France uh, has a, a number of nuclear reactors. Um, there's a, a bunch around the world. Unfortunately, we haven't built any here in the United States for quite some time, which is totally stupid. Uh, the technology has improved so much on the uh, nuclear reactor uh, technology that that's a really clean uh, green energy uh, that we can use uh, very efficiently. Um, but anyway, there's still going to be a demand for uranium around the world. And uh, so I just happened to catch a video with Rick Rule. Rick Rule is like my hero. Uh, the guy is uh, one of the best investors uh, in, in precious metals. That, I mean, he's a multi-million millionaire. I mean, maybe billionaire. I don't even know. And uh, but I just listened to what he. So they had a he had a video where he was talking about because he can talk now. He's he's no longer uh, running Sprott. Uh, he's kind of just become mainly an investor, and he, I think he's he's still on the board of directors. But uh, and so he's not uh, constricted by the uh, the rules anymore. So he does talk a little bit about. Uh, and so I just wanted to throw out some some. Some things that uh, that he said. Uh, um, uh, there's uh, Bannerman Bannerman Resources. He rated that as a five. That's BMN. I couldn't buy it. Uh, you'd have to be on the London Exchange to get that, and Fidelity is not. Uh, now, if you wanted to open up an account at Sprott, they are on the London Exchange, and they can buy all these things. Now, I put in a limit buy on Global Atomic. That's G L A T F. That's G L A T F. Uh, and uh, he rated that a five right now um, because it's a little bit pricey. Uh, but what I did, you know, what I do is I just put low limit buys on these. If I pick them up, I pick them up. If I don't, I don't. Who cares? Um, Boss Energy. Now I just picked this up. Um, it's uh, BQSSF. BQSSF. Uh, Rick Rule rated that a four. He said the price is a little bit high on it. So what I did is I just put a limit buy. At, 12 cents a share. Now these are these are speculative. I'm probably going to lose all my money. <laughs> and I'm just telling you. I, but I'm not, you know, I'm not spending, you know, a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there. Uh, but I, I, you know, I do believe uranium and you never know which one of these might uh, hit hit the uh, the mother load. And, uh, and then you got to, you, you know, it's like he, it's like Rick Rule said, you can buy these little uh, companies and, uh, you know, 10 may lose, but one will win. And, uh, and that one, will offset the other nine investments altogether, you know, because it, it'll, it'll, it'll run. So that's kind of where I'm at. 
there's Mar Mar en Marencina Energy. Uh, that's M A R X F M A R X F. Uh, you got four cis metals, and these say I don't think he rated them because I didn't write down the rating, so I'm not sure about these. But I'm just throwing out the symbols uh, F O S Y F F O S Y F. Um, there's baseload uh, energy. That's B S E N F B S E N F. Um, and uh, of course you got deep yellow, and that's D Y L L F. He didn't mention that one. Now he did talk about Car Carmina Car Carmico. That's CCJ. That's CCJ on the stock and chains. He gave it a, a five uh, because it's too. It's, he said it's way too. The price is too high on that. So what I, you know, what I did once again, I put a limit buy on it down low, um, and then you, of course you've got uh, deep yellow, which is D Y L L F. Uh, so I, you know that's enough on the investing. Um, let's talk about the garden here. Uh, as you can see, I raked in the uh, the Miracle Grow. Um, We'll water this in later. Now I want to read you the directions. <laughs> I'm good at reading directions, ain't I? Because <laughs> because they suck. You know, every time I get, you know, I'll, I'll go to change the oil in my Honda, but so I buy the directions, and then they don't tell me the one thing I need to know. Same with this. Okay, let's just read this to you real quick. Um, um, you well, it, you know, this is a high yielding plant. It's peppers. Uh, start seed indoors and eight weeks before planting outdoors. Now, we didn't do that because <laughs> I didn't know to do that because I just pulled the seeds out because I didn't think I was ready to plant. But there's, I, from watching the YouTube videos, there's nothing wrong with planting them outdoors. It's just you got to keep the area well watered uh, once the seeds go in the ground for about the first uh, eight weeks, you know, uh, as, they, as they grow up out of the ground. So I'm just going to put them right in the ground. Um, Keep seed moist in full sunlight. Okay, it's not going to, well, you know, it does get full sunlight here maybe three hours a day, uh, which will be good when it gets really, really hot. Now, it, is it hot today? Yeah, it's like 90 degrees. That's nothing here in Florida, man. It, it, 110 be be shortly. Um, so, um, transplant when three inches tall. Of course, we don't have to transplant because we're just putting it right in the ground. Or sow directly into the garden in sunny location after frost danger is passed. Now, am I a little bit late planting these? Yeah, I, I should have probably gotten them in uh, earlier in February, but we did have some cold weather, you know, that, uh, um, so I'm kind of glad that I, I waited and, and we'll see. I mean, I think it's just about perfect the time that I'm putting these into the ground. Uh, plant two seeds every 18 inches, okay? And that's why, look, tape measure, huh? Let's measure out 18 inches. Boom, we'll lock that in place. So now I can, I can measure between plants. Uh, then, tie, you know, trim or transplant to one plant every 18 inches when three inches tall. Use a balanced fertilizer when six inches tall to increase production. Now we already put down a little bit of the miracle grow. Um, so now what's the one thing we're missing here? Huh? Think about it. What are we missing in these directions? because <laughs> I had to go on YouTube and spend two hours trying to figure this out. How deep do you plant the seeds? Okay, and, I, and so I'm thinking, okay, you know, do I put them six inches deep? Do I put them one inch deep? Do I just put, lay them on top of the ground? You know, that, that, that's why, you know, whoever writes the damn directions on everything, they, they never include the, the one detail that you're really looking for. Now, after my research on YouTube, Literally, all you're going to do is just put a finger in the ground, dig a little hole, maybe about, I'm going to go down about an inch. They said a quarter, a quarter inch, so you're really just, just trying to get it to surface and then cover them up. Now, this is two seeds per hole. I'm going to put three in because I'm outdoors. Um, so, uh, you know, you don't need to sit here and watch me put the seeds in the ground. But uh, just suffice it to say that what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out about six inches from the patio here. Because I don't care if the peppers hang over the patio a little bit. That doesn't bother me. Because um, I don't want to waste any area. I mean, this was a hell of a lot of work getting that rock out and putting in soil, you know. So I don't want to waste any of this area for my vegetable garden. And, uh, and then I'll measure, you know, 18 inches and I'll put three more seeds right here. And then, you know, so this is just going to be a little pepper area. Now, how many, how many plants can I have? 
uh, you know, I could cover this area. I'll probably have about 10, 10 plants. You know, you don't want to grow too much. I mean, how many peppers are you going to eat? <laughs> you know, now I, I could give some to the neighbors, but uh, that's not what this garden's all about. So the next thing I'm going to plant will be string beans uh, right over in here because my wife loves string beans. And uh, we'll get those going. Um, so that's kind of it for the, the resilience video today. Uh, I'm sure I missed a few uh, ticker symbols, but you can go up on YouTube and, and do your own homework on uranium mines. And by the way, I picked up one of these stocks. I think I picked up uh, BQSSF uh, at 12 cents a share, which was expensive according to Rick Rule. But, you know, I wanted to dab my feet in. Uh, I think I bought 5,000 shares. Uh, so uh, who knows, you know, I may probably lose all my money. Because <laughs> I don't know, you know, all I do is follow what the experts say. Uh, did I go out and do my, uh, my necessary homework on that by looking at the um, price to earnings or the price to, uh, you know, all, the, all of the, uh, the insider buying, you know, all the things you're supposed to look at when you're going to buy a stock. No, I did not. I just listened to Rick Rule and I'm sure he would smack me in the head <laughs> and say, you're not, that's not how you're supposed to invest, Kirk. <laughs> you don't just listen to one person and just go buy the damn stock but you know sometimes you just don't have time for all of this and uh, because I sold out of my position in SIVR once they changed that prospectus because I had uh, I had about 30 30,000 or so in that and I uh, when they changed that prospectus that to me was a big huge red flag to get the hell out of that position so now you got all this cash well what's cash doing it's devaluing you know we've got inflation galore um, you know, we're going to hit $5 a gallon for gas, uh, which is why I got the 100 mile to the gallon motorcycle. <laughs> so, so, I, you know, all I'm doing, is, okay, this is called resilience, people. I'm doing a little bit at a time. You know, I'm, I'm going to take one load of dirt out of here and drop it off today. And then I got to go get a hike in for my exercise because I didn't exercise yesterday. I, well, I did work out here. That's exercise. But, uh, all right, let's get for today. Oh, man. Get this hell getting old. Can't even get up off of the floor. Uh, I'll get these three seeds in the ground, and uh, and that'll be it for today. Uh, you guys have a good one, and uh, peace out.